Hi! In this video, you will learn about how to operate the Pure Lab High Efficiency Glove Box. What I have in front of me is the Pure Lab High Efficiency Glove Box that is located in the Advanced Lab in the Chemistry Department of NUS. The first thing you have to do when you approach the glove box is to check that the light system is on. The switch for the light system is located at the top roof of the whole box. You can see my hand is pressing on it. There's a label that says light. You see that there are different parts to the glove box. The box, the box gloves, the large ender chamber, and the small ender chamber. Most of the time, if you could, we utilize a small ender chamber because you know that the volume here is smaller so it will be faster for us to evacuate the whole ender chamber and to pump in nitrogen gas. We will also minimize the wastage. And if the glassware or the substance that we are going to put inside the glove box to work, it is small enough, we apply the small ender chamber because it will take a very long time for purging and evacuation of the ender chamber to occur. And here we see that we have a lot of bulk hanging on to the large ender chamber that we have to write down after every use to trace the amount of, you see here, water level, oxygen level, nitrogen level. And over in this column, you need to fill in what you did and perform in the glove box. Your name, the date, and you can record all these numbers, they can be found from the screen on top, right here, right over here. First up, before you put your hands into the box gloves, make sure that your fingernails are not too pointed, you do not wearing any kinds of jewelry, accessories, rings, watches, because this could spoil the plastics and puncture the rubber gloves and deflate the whole system, which renders the whole system useless. The glove box has four important components. The actual box is actually a large aluminum chamber with a front plastic window and two impressive looking gloves. And this is a working area. Organic solvents will spoil the plastic and fancy fingerware, opulent wedding trophies or pointy fingernails will puncture all these rubber gloves and deflate the system. So be very careful when you're working with the glove box. And there is an enter chamber something like a submarine or spaceship airlock, which is how things get in and out without letting in air. The next part is the gas in the glove box is constantly circulated over a scrubber, which we call the catalyst that removes any air or water that has made its way into the enclosure. And since the catalyst is damaged by many kinds of reactive chemicals, such as chlorinated solvents, sulfur compounds, we must be careful what we allow to evaporate into the box atmosphere. There is a fan inside the box to circulate the box atmosphere through the canister. Also, the glove box must be able to regulate pressure inside. The device that regulates the pressure is set to tolerate only a few millibar of positive and negative pressure and automatically pumps nitrogen out if the pressure gets too high or draws fresh nitrogen in from a tank, a dewer, if the pressure gets too low. One can also regulate the pressure manually with a foot pedal. There are several precautions when you're using the glove box. You know that the glove box is an isolation device, so never open it to air, meaning that you do not open both doors of the same end chamber and moving things into the box without pumping. No sharps should be near the gloves. We should minimize the use of sharps inside the box and use extreme caution when we have to do so. And the end chamber should be under dynamic vacuum we should minimize solvent evaporation inside the glove box. Before you start, ensure that your hands are clean and you're wearing a pair of gloves. You cannot just put your naked hands inside the box gloves because there may be contamination to the other uses next time. So put on a pair of gloves. Of course, PP is a must. Your safety goggles, lab coat, cover shoes. Right, so now we put on the pair of gloves. So here we go, gloves on, and we're good to go. Check that when the needle in the vacuum gauge is pointing to the left hand side, 
it shows that it is under a stable vacuum. It should be at about negative 28 to negative 30 in mercury level. You see that the valve is right at the middle. That means we are not having any more vacuum or nitrogen into the ender chamber because right now the ender chamber has been evacuated by the previous user. You turn on the valve slowly. You notice that right now the needle on the vacuum gauge is slowly rotating to the right hand side towards zero. That means we are having nitrogen gas filling in. You have to perform this step very carefully, not too fast because if you have an influx of nitrogen gas suddenly, it may blow away your equipment, topple them over and causing spillage inside the ender chamber. So once the needle goes to zero in mercury, you can rotate the valve again towards the left hand side to evacuate the whole ender chamber. This is because with one flush, with one vacuum suction, just one flush, we can't be sure if the whole ender chamber is all cleansed of moisture or contaminated substances. So we have to repeat this step three times. Again, rotate the valve carefully, not too fast. We do not want all the air to be sucked out so quickly. Again, topple your glassware. When the meter reading shows about negative 28, you can start to turn it back to nitrogen. Remember, when the ender chamber is under vacuum, we cannot open the door. So now, once it is flushed three times, it is now filled with nitrogen gas, and we now open the door. We rotate the screw gently until finger tight. Do it carefully. Open it up with two hands if possible. Now this is the chamber and you see that here inside we have our own supporting container. So that it's easier to transfer into the box. I'm going to take it out and show you. Be it needles, flask or chemicals. Now let me demonstrate to you to transfer a clean round bottom flask inside the glove box. A clean and dry round bottom flask. I'm holding it with my right hand. Put it onto the support. Put it onto the support and make sure it's all the way in to the ender chamber because from the inside the box is very hard to retrieve if you don't push it all the way in. So remember you see that it's very spacious, but still you're gonna push it all the way in. You don't want to stretch all the way. And once you're ready, you close the door again gentle and turn the knob. Screw it, not too tight, just finger tight. What do we do now? We evacuate. Because just now the ender chamber was exposed to air. So now we're going to evacuate and then put the nitrogen and do that again three times. Remember, before we insert our hands inside the box glove, we have to ensure that the ender chamber is filled with nitrogen, not vacuum. Because after you wore your gloves, if you're trying to open the door which is, which is under vacuum, you cannot open even if you're a Hulk. Once it's filled with nitrogen, we rotate the valve to the middle. Now we insert our left hand first inside the box glove, using your right hand to guide your fingers in position. Once your fingers are inside the cavity, be confident and push it in all the way. Stretching out your fingers. Loosen them. You see my hand? Make sure you have dexterity over here. Your fingers can move about without being restricted in any way. So it's all good. Hello. And then now the right hand, same procedures. Put your five fingers inside the cavities. And once ready, be confident and push it in all the way. Open your hand and your fingers. And go for it and push. Yeah! Ah, look at that. Very happy looking pair of hands inside the glove box. And next, this is where your chamber is and we got our substance. In this demonstration, because I'm not going to show you how to add chemicals, it is not dirty, I'm just going to show you how to open the door and close the door. I did not put on any gloves. But in future, if you need to transfer any chemicals or add chemicals and weigh them, you have to wear another pair of gloves inside the glove box. So rotate the screw counterclockwise 
loosen it, and then open the door. Be gentle and take out whatever you need to. Be very careful. You see, that's the reason why I told you to put it all the way in. So in this case, we have a round bottom flask. Right. Yeah. And so now everything is inside the glove box. Replace it here first. Uh, suppose you need to do some weighing of chemicals. You have to put on the pair of gloves you see on the screen here. And after that, you just do likewise and see if you're doing it inside the lab, on the bench top. Just that now we're having a more secure and clean environment. You turn on the balance. It's just the normal procedure, so you do not have to be afraid. See your spatulas here. Ring papers around. Gloves, you have to wear them. Kim wipe, whatever you need, it's all inside. Alright, after you are done, this tray, make sure it goes into the ender chamber. And then now close the door. Screw tight. Just finger tight will do. And now, okay, you, how do you remove your hands from the box gloves? Alright, before that I will wait first, alright. So, when you remove your hand from the glove box, clench your fist a bit first. So that's easier for the next user. And then once ready, go for it and put it out. And ta-da! Look at that, my hands resume freedom. So suppose you want to move the materials out of the glove box. You open the outer door and to remove the object. And after removing the object from the chamber, we close the outside door and evacuate. And we close the three-way valve after half an hour. And then we fill out the logbook. How you get all this reading? You read from the top here. Make sure to 0, 0.0. 0 0.1, pressure 1.6, and 2 gauge. You can read from the back of this glove box. Small or large ender chamber, we use the small one here. And the activities we conducted, which is the deposition of the round bottom flask. So that's all. If you're still not sure, there is actually an SOP, Standard Operation Procedure Manual, beside the glove box. Please open it, open the file, take a look. It is very clearly indicated what you need to do, what not to do, all in black and white. Lovely. Alright, after you're done, don't forget to switch off the light. Great. So thank you for watching this video. This is Funman on the mic. I'm happy to guide you. See you soon.